So, uh, in this uh, lecture we will look at a particular application of the uh, stagnation uh, flows or stagnation properties that we uh, saw the previous class which is in flow measurement of compressible flows and uh, that is in particularly to the uh, pitot tube. Pitot tube uh, must, be, uh, must be familiar to all of you, it is a flow measurement uh, technique. Uh, it is uh, simple in construction, it is basically a tube, a hollow tube into which uh, uh, the flow uh, coming in at any particular point if you introduce a pitot tube, uh, then the flow that is uh, coming into the tube goes and stagnates within the tube and uh, the pressure uh, within at that particular uh, point is measured um, using any uh, pressure measurement system and uh, so a pitot tube actually uh, measures the uh, stagnation pressure of the flow. So, always uh, it is kept if you look at it, it is always normal to the flow direction. So, if you are measuring the static pressure, it is always measured uh, parallel to the flow direction um, for stagnation pressure or if you are inside um, some flow the stag the static pressure is always measured parallel while uh, a pitot tube measures or stagnation pressure is measured uh, normal to the flow and it uh, when the flow stagnates within the tube then you measure the stagnation pressure so um, effectively pitot tubes uh, measure uh, stagnation pressure uh, but uh, just the use uh, just by knowing uh, st uh, stagnation pressure uh, we we cannot convert that into um, uh, velocity because that is our final interest to know either velocity or Mach number uh, of the flow at that particular point. Mm, uh, then uh, you also need information on the static pressure. So, uh, often uh, this is done by a combination uh, known as the pitot static uh, tube which has two ports you can see that the central port is normal to the flow which is uh, the stagnation which measures the stagnation pressure but uh, around the periphery you have holes uh, through which uh, pressure which is parallel to the flow is measured and that is uh, static pressure. So, you measure in a pitot static tube both uh, stagnation pressure and uh, static pressure. Now, uh, how can this be converted into uh, the information on velocity uh, in an ideal flow in ideally considering uh, this uh, condition. So, um, this must be very familiar to all of you. Um, this is the uh, incompressible um, pitot equation. Uh, in this uh, the principle used is directly the Bernoulli equation, uh, there are no losses that is the um, basic uh, uh, definition of the stagnation process. So, um, you and uh, this is a uh, incompressible flow, so density remains a constant. So, all this rho naught, rho 1 all of them are equal to rho. Uh, and uh, so, uh, you write the Bernoulli equation uh, considering that there is no variation in the uh, potential energy or then uh, this is uh, directly P naught by rho equal to P by rho plus V square by 2 and that is P naught minus P by rho multiplied by 2 under root is velocity, velocity is uh, given by this equation. So, this is for the case uh, when density can be taken to be a constant uh, in incompressible uh, flows and for when you are applying this in the context of gaseous flows. Uh, then and this is uh, for flows with very low uh, velocity. We have already uh, discussed uh, that we consider flows to be 
compressible or compressibility effects are important once Mach number starts uh, becoming more than um, 0 0.3. So, uh, for all flows less than uh, 0 0.3 uh, this is a uh, valid uh, equation to use, but uh, just in the previous class we saw that as Mach number increases. Uh, if you take the stagnation uh, properties and see how they vary, they vary very rapidly with uh, Mach number. So, uh, this can no longer, this Bernoulli equation can be no longer applied in the case of a um, compressible gaseous uh, flow. So, then uh, one has to look at the basic uh, definition of the uh, process itself and uh, that is uh, nothing but uh, the uh, pitot tube, uh, the process happening within the pitot tube is actually a uh, stagnation process where you have the flow coming in and it stagnates within the uh, pitot tube. So, uh, once you measure both uh, P naught and P, then uh, this is a compressible flow now, uh, you have Mach numbers which are greater than um, point um, 3, um, then uh, you have to use the stagnation process and under uh, stagnation process the relationship between P naught and P is uh, 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square gamma by gamma minus 1 for a uh, calorically perfect uh, gas. So, at uh, this point often when uh, we uh, refer to um, uh, this uh, uh, pitot measurements or flow measurements, you have to understand various uh, uh, terminologies. Um, when it is, uh, pitots are usually used to measure uh, the air speed um, in uh, flights. So, what uh, one is interested there is to know the uh, velocity of uh, air flow uh, and in, in a consequence um, to that uh, this uh, often is referred to as the free stream uh, velocity or the free stream uh, Mach number and uh, it is generally given a subscript m infinity that is for the free uh, stream. So, um, this is also often uh, used. Uh, and similarly, flight Mach number is the uh, Mach number of the uh, speed of the flight or speed of the object moving in air uh, divided by the uh, ambient speed of sound. Okay, so, uh, that also uh, is Mach number uh, there is also m infinity which is velocity by a infinity. This is v infinity. But uh, one should also uh, remember that uh, Mach number is a local quantity and if it is getting measured at different points on a body, uh, then that those Mach numbers can be different and when uh, one reads uh, certain uh, articles or uh, numericals, then you have to be careful with these uh, technical words and their uh, distinctions. So, mm, now uh, directly we can measure uh, the Mach number by inverting this uh, equation. Uh, we know P0 by P which is measured uh, by using the uh, pitot and uh, you know P0 and uh, P. Uh, then uh, getting Mach number is just the inversion of that uh, relationship. But, uh, for uh, low Mach numbers uh, generally, then we can use a small correction factor. Uh, so, this again uh, refers to uh, the points when computation power was quite small, but also this gives us a good um, sort of uh, idea to see when really these comp uh, these compressibility effects uh, have are becoming uh, significant and that is to look at uh, the 
C p or uh, the definition of um, the non dimensional factor p 0 minus p by rho v square by 2. If you take an incompressible flow this should actually equal to be 1. Okay. Now, as uh, the flow becomes compressible we see what happens uh, to this coefficient of pressure C p. Um, so, uh, this can be uh, easily uh, so some algebraic manipulations can be done over here if you take p outside that is you get p naught by p minus 1 and uh, this is half rho v square. Uh, now, we know that a square is gamma p by rho. So, if you introduce a sort of multiply both sides by uh, gamma, then this is gamma p by uh, rho uh, this factor that is come in here. So, this will turn out to be gamma by 2 m square v square by a square is m square. So, p 0 by p minus 1 uh, divided by gamma by 2 m square. Now, p 0 by p uh, is the isentropic process. So, you can replace that with um, the uh, isentropic equation this is 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square uh, whole power gamma by gamma minus 1 minus 1. Now, let us uh, look at uh, small Mach numbers. So, Mach numbers are not uh, very large. Uh, we are looking at uh, points where compressibility becomes important that means, the uh, speed is low, but it is becoming high. So, uh, Mach numbers are small. When Mach numbers are small, then uh, this quantity is uh, quite small is really small. So, uh, this expression then is uh, 1 plus x the whole power n, uh, where n is in this case gamma by gamma minus 1, which can be expanded using the binomial expansion to uh, 1 plus n x plus n into n minus 1 by 2 factorial x square and x cube so on. So, this is the binomial expansion. Okay. So, uh, this n is gamma by gamma minus 1. So, these factors come into play uh, gamma by gamma minus 1 minus 1 is uh, 1 by gamma minus 1. Similarly, gamma by gamma minus 1 minus 2 is uh, 2 minus gamma by gamma minus 1. These are just algebra, but these can be substituted into this equation and we can get uh, the expansion in terms of Mach numbers m square m 4 m 6 terms. Remember that there is a negative one out here. So, that uh, this one and this one minus one cancel each other. Also, uh, there is a division by gamma by 2 m square over here. So, if you look at the first term uh, this gamma minus 1 and gamma minus 1 cancel you get a gamma by 2 m square and that is how you get uh, 1 here. Okay. So, 1 and then you can continue to do this algebra where everywhere it is divided by uh, gamma by 2 m square you get m square by 4 the term third term is uh, 2 minus gamma by 24 m power 4. Remember that uh, Mach number is small in this uh, mm, uh, particular expansion. Therefore, further all the terms are not uh, considered. And so, this will give us a approximate uh, uh, method to calculate, but which is quite good uh, to calculate the coefficient of pressure at uh, small Mach number. So, this is a, a correction uh, where mm, from traditional Bernoulli where it is considered that there is no change in density and its incompressible flow. Here as Mach number changes you see that uh, there is a uh, compressibility effect coming into play and C p changes. How does the C p change? You see it increases the C p the correction for compressibility there it is increasing and 
typically is if you look at Mach number 0.3 that is over here. So, it is slightly greater than uh, in an increase of greater than uh, 2 percent. So, uh, this gives an indication. So, uh, in compressible flows when the flow uh, velocity increases beyond Mach number of 0.3 then one can no longer uh, consider the incompressible uh, Bernoulli's equation. Uh, one has to consider uh, the compressible ways of estimating the uh, velocity which is using directly using the uh, stagnation pressure uh, equation uh, P naught by P equal to 1 plus comma minus 1 by 2 m square or um, if the Mach numbers are low then one can go in for a uh, compressibility correction uh, of the kind that has been uh, discussed over here and uh, then estimate the uh, uh, Mach number from uh, the measured stagnation pressure and uh, static pressure. Now, just let us look at uh, uh, the how these things uh, compare. So, uh, just by using a simple numerical um, calculate uh, the dynamic pressure of the flow if the free stream velocity. So, it is here it has been written as free stream velocity which is V infinity is uh, 175 uh, meters per second. So, uh, pressure is uh, 1 atmosphere and temperature is 298 uh, Kelvin. Uh, what is the percentage error in dynamic pressure if the uh, flow is treated as uh, incompressible. Now, uh, dynamic pressure is uh, half rho v square, half uh, rho v square, this is Q dynamic pressure and from uh, uh, the definition of C p you can see that this is nothing but p naught minus p. So, p naught minus p p naught minus p infinity. So, pi half rho v square. So, we need to know what is this. Uh, so, q is equal to p naught minus p by uh, c p. Now, for uh, now we can uh, do this calculation. Do we know? Yes, we know the temperature. So, if you know temperature, uh, and velocity uh, m infinity is known m infinity is v infinity by um, mm, square root of gamma r t infinity this is air. So, uh, gamma is 1.4 r is 287 t infinity is 298 and this is 175 you should uh, if you calculate it will come close to uh, 0.5 m infinity is close to 0.5 and that can be uh, then um, put into uh, this equation uh, for the uh, compressible this is the correction factor and uh, you are using the q compressible equation and get what is p naught minus p infinity. Uh, you can uh, check this also by using the equation where here we are not making any uh, assumptions and it is uh, an exact uh, uh, equation while here we have truncated terms greater than m power 6 and so on. Uh, so, there is, uh, but if you do really compare these two are not very different are almost the same for the Mach number that is around 0.5. So, you get uh, Q compressible for this two conditions as uh, 19.1 uh, kilo Pascal. Uh, now, if you take the incompressible uh, estimate which is directly half rho v square half rho infinity v infinity square and uh, rho infinity and v infinity rho infinity can be calculated by P infinity by T infinity. So, uh, both are given. So, you can calculate this and V is known this is 17.9 kilo Pascal. So, uh, directly you can uh, see uh, that there is about uh, 6.3 percent difference uh, due to uh, compressibility. So, 
once the flow becomes compressible uh, one has to use uh, compressible uh, flow equations stagnation processes to calculate the uh, velocity or Mach number from the measurement of stagnation pressure and uh, static pressure and not uh, by using the incompressible uh, Bernoulli's equation. So, I think that point uh, is uh, made clear mm, here. Uh, so, in the next class what we will look at is mm, the star condition. So, stagnation conditions and uh, star conditions or sonic conditions are important critical uh, conditions for a uh, gaseous flow. So, next class we will look at uh, star conditions.